Amrita Vishwa Vidya Pitam is one of India's premier top ranked universities which focuses on transforming lives through learning, research and innovation. The university was established 19 years ago in the year 2003 and has made significant achievements in a short time. Education for life, education for living. Amrita University is guided by the thoughtfulness of our Chancellor, Amma, who laid down the philosophy of education for life by placing equal stress on education for a living. It is this vision that led to the establishment of a vast network of educational institutions that provide modern education while imparting the traditional values. While the pursuit of academic excellence forms the core of Amrita's success, it also undertakes the responsibility to shape the whole character of youngsters with love, care and compassion. The university is headquartered at the foothills of the Western Ghats in Coimbatore, Tamil Nadu and has five other campuses spread across South India in Amrithapuri, Kerala, Kochi, Kerala, Bengaluru, Karnataka, Chennai, Tamil Nadu and Mysore, Karnataka. The university will soon launch its new campuses in Amravati, Andhra Pradesh, Faridabad, Delhi, NCR. Our inspiration, a renowned humanitarian leader and spiritual leader, Amba is the chancellor and guiding light of Amrita Vishwa Vidya Pitam. Amma's concept of education, stress on research and commitment to instilling universal values have come together to shape Amrita into an institution with the latest achievements and discoveries combined with compassion and service-mindedness. As Amma said in 2010, when the State University of New York presented her with an honorary doctorate in Humane Letters. Rankings The multi-campus, multidisciplinary research establishment is ranked as fifth best university in India 2021 by National Institutional Ranking Framework, NIRF. We have also been accorded the status of Institute of Eminence, IOE, by the Ministry of Education, Government of India. A testament to our pursuit of excellence is the NAC A++ accreditation score, the highest possible. NAC accreditation measures universities for excellence in curricular aspects, teaching, learning and evaluation, research, innovations and extension, infrastructure and learning resources, student support and progression, governance, leadership and management, institutional values and best practices, global impact and international collaborations. Among the private educational institutions in the country, Amrita has entered into MOUs and collaborations with more than 450 leading universities around the globe. Students also benefit from our relations with industries and interactions with top management of multinational companies. These collaborations facilitate student exchange programs, student visits, industrial training and project guidance under reputed corporate entities. Placements Placements at Amrita have always been best in class with students usually having more than one job offer. Some students have up to three job offers by the end of their course from reputed MNCs, be it engineering, management, life sciences, arts or sciences. Amrita is a place where the world's best companies look for talent. More than 200 companies visit the campus every year and the average salary offered to our students is 5.8 lakh per annum. Meanwhile, the highest package offered is 56.95 lakh per annum and the highest stipend for internship is rupees 80,000 per month. Amrita's Technology Business Incubator, TBI, 
is a non-profit supported by the government of India that funds, mentors and nurtures ideas by startups and entrepreneurs. It focuses on developing innovations in the areas of information technology, cyber security, networking, social media and more. The TPI startups have obtained multiple awards and recognition both from India and across the globe. Till date, TBI has incubated more than 75 startups and mentored 216 startup ideas with 0% loss from investments. It funds up to 1 crore rupees per startup and has opened up many more funding options through its partnership with venture capital firms and angel investor networks. Amrita TBI is one of the only six incubators selected to be world-class under Nidhi Ayog's Atal Innovation Mission. Campus Life A home away from home. At Amrita, we believe in a holistic approach towards our students' development. To augment students' classroom learning, all campuses provide students with digital and central libraries quiet study centers, seminar halls, e-learning studios, computer labs, and campus-wide free Wi-Fi. The university encourages both indoor and outdoor sports and games, and there are world-class swimming pools, gymnasiums, stadiums, and games arenas. Various clubs cater to the artistic and scientific minds of the students. If you look around all of Amrita's campuses, you will see the prevailing educational environment is in communion with nature. The sand, the seas and the sky define the backdrop of these temples of learning. It vibrates with an energy of togetherness and encourages us to live in harmony with everything around us, including a unity within ourselves. This setting is suited to instill both learners and the learned with the courage and wisdom to face the challenges of life. The campus at Etimani is considered India's most picturesque. It is like an oasis in a desert. What started out as a barren landscape underwent a miraculous transformation through the university's tree planting project. Today, there are more than 1 lakh trees growing there, the most extensive collection in number and species on a university campus in South India. The Live-In Labs program originated from Amma's idea to bridge the rural and urban divide by sending university students to remote villages in India to understand the everyday difficulties faced by people living there. The program is designed to be a multidisciplinary real-life learning experience offered to both international participants and Amrita University's faculty and students. The lab's objective is to expose youths to day-to-day -day problems faced in rural communities with a two-week to six-month periods of live-in internships in Indian villages. It also aims to inspire them to dedicate the knowledge and skills they acquired at university to help develop practical, cost-effective solutions to the challenges faced by the villages. Researchers at Amrita Vishwa Vidya Pitam partner with senior scientists at world's leading research universities to innovate new ideas and invent new products applying existing technology towards solving some of the world's most pressing problems from disaster management to assuring access to education and the management and cure of diseases. This effort reflects in Amrita's national and international research rankings.
India's first UNESCO Chair on Women's Empowerment and Gender Equality. Empowerment through innovation and technology. The Center for Women Empowerment and Gender Equality is a research-focused academic center for promoting gender equality and fostering women's empowerment with a special focus on using technology and other innovative methods. This center will offer diverse courses in key focus areas, pilot radical ideas, and collaborate with leading universities and institutions. The Amala Bharatam Campaign ABC Clean India Campaign was a program pioneered by Amrita, aimed at improving public health and restoring India's physical beauty. The project was launched in 2010 during Amma's 57th birthday celebrations and through this campaign, volunteers undertake periodic cleaning of roads, markets, temples, government offices and hospitals. As a part of this campaign, garbage was sorted and either recycled or properly disposed of. Amrita Vishwa Vidya Pitam, along with Kerala's prisons and correctional services and Tamil Nadu Prison Department initiated Amrita Yoga classes and IAM Technique Meditation sessions in 2018 to address and transform the physical, mental and emotional health of prison inmates. Our goal is to teach yoga and meditation techniques to help the prison inmates become more self-aware. They learn to breathe with awareness and manage emotions through these exercises. Ours is a changing world. It needs people who can adapt to change with minds that can expand and include change and yet hold human friendly values that can withstand all changes which is why the world needs education that shapes the minds of these people and which is why the world needs Amrita Vishwa Vidya Pitam. Education for life, education for living A university where future is driven by imagination. Experiential learning creates diverse opportunities. Where industry exposure and international partnerships help you sail. Come, start your journey towards success with Amrita University. There's a place where the best minds come together, work together, work to end inequalities, work towards transforming lives. This is a place recognized as one of the world's best universities. This is Amrita, now ranked among the top 100 universities in the world and ranked number one in India. Amrita University. There's a reason why we pick up the highest grades nationally and internationally, year after year after year. That reason is you. Now, with an A++ accreditation from NAC and consistent rankings among the top universities in NIRF, Amrita, we get recognized because you must. A warm good evening all. Welcome to the day one of Engineering Foundation Program Season 2. Engineering Foundation Program opens up a window into the world of technology. It is designed to give a brief introduction on how the world is utilizing basic area of sciences and mathematics to make human life easier. This program facilitates the transition from plus two to the engineering stream as seamless as possible. The Engineering Foundation program is a five day continuous workshop. And at the end of every session, you can clarify any queries regarding the topic. And on the final day, students will get an opportunity to interact with our alumni, Mr. Vignesh Ji, who currently serves as the data scientist at Ada Energy. Along with that, we are conducting a quiz program on the basis of uh, the topic and the winners will be awarded with an exciting prizes. So please note students, the certificate will be provided to those students who have completely attending everyday session. So we are having Ms. Lakshmi, who currently serves as the assistant manager in career counseling, Amrita Vishwavidya Piram Kayambathur. 
So without further ado, I would like to welcome Ms. Lakshmi to take this session. Over to you, Lakshmi. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. So yes, I hope my audio video both are fine. <clears throat> yes. Okay. So hi students, uh, I wish a very happy and a wonderful evening to all the engineering aspirants here. So I hope the screen is also visible. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah. So just hold on for a minute. So I take this opportunity to really appreciate you all. I know it's a working day. You have been in school. So after coming back, you have taken a decision to join the session. So I really appreciate that. <clears throat> so I take this opportunity to welcome you all to the Engineering Foundation Program conducted by the Directorate of Admissions and Academic Outreach at Amrita Vishwavidya Bedam. Maybe most of the students who join the session or maybe freshers may be the first time joining such a program. So before starting today's session and before moving to today's topic, I would like to give you an idea why Amrita is here with such a program or what's the aim of this program? What's the need of a program called EFP? Why EFP? So I'll address that query that may be in all of your mind and then we'll move to the session. So I'm, I'm just looking into the chat box. If there is anything, you can type in the chat box. I'm looking that also. So if there is any queries, maybe in, uh, by the end of the session, I will be addressing all of them. So yes, I hope uh, this question is very familiar to all of you. When am I ever going to use this in my real life? I think it's a very familiar question. And Mia, it's like every student at some point of time have thought about this question. Um, I would I would give you uh, some example. Maybe I hope all of you are in your 11th and 12th. And maybe when your teacher is teaching you integration, there is a problem with double integral. It's like d by dx of something, differential problem. Maybe teacher is teaching optics, a lot of things. Maybe with physics, you will not have that much confusion. But I think obviously with mathematics, you will have that confusion. All the formulas, the tan theta, all the integrations, all the differentiation, all the derivations, everything. Maybe you feel like, yeah, whether I'll use this or maybe when I was a kid, I was having this question in my mind and I feel like I'm, I'm studying all these things because I want to write the exam. I want to score good mark. Then only I'll be able to get into a university. So that was my uh, point of view when I was a kid, maybe in my eighth or seven. Maybe some of you have even asked this question, this query to your teachers. So I would say whatever area it is, even if it's integration, even if it's differentiation, even if it's optics, or if it's electricity and magnetism, or whatever topic it is, we are using all of them around us or maybe in our day-to-day -day activities. But we are not able to uh, understand that this is this concept, or this concept is there in this thing which we are using in our day-to-day -day activities. It's, it's not about scoring mark. It's about everything around you, everything that you come across, even this integration function. I would say that function is used to calculate the braking mechanism of a vehicle. If it's a car or if it's a uh, bike or something, this integral function is used to calculate the braking mechanism of a car. So think about it. So everything that we come across in our school uh, plays a role in our daily life, maybe something around us, maybe something related to technology. This program aims you to give a clear idea, at least for some topics that you have studied, some topics of physics as well as some topics of mathematics. And uh, I, I wish to call everybody, not only those people who wish to be engineers or who, who are engineers, I wish to call everybody as engineers. We all are engineers in one way or the other. It's like your body is the engine and your mind is the engineer or you are the engineer. We are doing a lot of things every day, right? Right from the morning after waking up, we are doing a lot of things. Going to school, coming back, doing this thing, that thing, a lot of things. So every task you used to do in your day-to-day -day life or every day-to-day -day activity requires some skills. So the course called engineering is to develop what are skills you have or what are area of interest you have 
engineering as a course which can give or take that skill to the next level that's what it mainly focuses on something like upgrading the skills to the next level or taking it to the next level so we all are born as engineers and uh, one one thing or one tip to everybody is do engineer your life maybe when a small problem comes in your life how we are going to tackle it maybe when i have a problem how am i going to solve it uh, even if it's related to your studies or something related to personal so every day we are trying to learn new things right so similarly uh, here we have come up with a program which can help you to bridge what are you have studied in your school with what are is needed for the society with with what are is there with the technology with what are is related with the advancements or with what are is related with the applications so it's it's just a mapping between what are subjects you have studied in your school with what are technologies or or to make the transition from a school level to a graduate level seamless as possible we'll discuss a lot of practical applications today so when are we are learning a new thing a new tip in our life we all are becoming engineers or we are all are becoming better individuals so this is the course structure for today's program so today we'll be discussing i think i have already covered what's the reason behind efp it's to give you an understanding about why you have studied a lot of things in your school what's the need of studying them today we'll be discussing electricity and magnetism then probability semiconductors and calculators sorry calculus so two topics from physics and two topics from mathematics we'll be covering that and in the final day as parvati ma'am have told we'll have a session with an alumni so it's like uh, he is uh, working with an ev sector i know all of you have heard about the ether right so he is working with an ev sector so he come from a mechanical engineering background this is something which is really important he basically is a mechanical engineer who is a 2017 pass out of amrita university so after completing mechanical engineering his current post is he is working as a data scientist and that too in an ev field so see the different things after completing mechanical he he switched on or he is working as data scientist and that too in an ev field so there will be a lot of things that that will come to your mind about data about the data analysis so who is a data scientist maybe that type of questions maybe why from mechanical to data scientist that may be a question so be ready with what are queries that you have in your mind so we can have a discussion about um, all the career opportunities that are available and on the final day we'll have a quiz also which is called the foundation program quiz which will contain some basic questions of what are topics that we'll be discussing today so yes i would uh, like to wind up the introductory part by referring to a quote of sir arthur in a sufficiently advanced technology is equivalent to magic now till now you have uh, seen different topics when you are studying different topics what you thought was something like uh, the uh, the subject oriented right when our your teacher is teaching you physics or mathematics you think it from a subjective way now what i wish to say is when are you coming up with something uh, or when are you are focusing on something when are you uh, try to understand a new phenomena you have to relate it to technology when are you come across something new try to relate it with technology or try to relate it with what is happening now because technology has gone so far or it's, it it matters a lot nowadays so i wish to uh, advise you to see everything from that perspective because being an engineer it's really important to understand what are is happening now what all advancements have come up so all the best to all the students who have joined here and i know this is a very famous person and everybody knows who he is yes right can anybody type his name in the chat box yes i am looking into the chat part so i just thought i would i would just collect opinions from you so can anybody name him in the chat box i'm i'm just waiting so he is none other than elon musk right multiple names are there uh, to describe him maybe uh, you'll think about starlink maybe tesla neuralink or paypal lot of things are there even if from a physics background something he has told is something like engineering is the closest thing or it's related to magic in the world so yes without further delay i think we'll start today's session and thank you all for joining so today's topic of discussion is electricity and magnetism 
Yes, I hope maybe from our 10th standard, we have studied uh, something related to the concept of electricity and magnetism. We have started studying electricity and magnetism from our 10th standard. Maybe the basic idea, what is electricity? Maybe um, in your school, your teachers have shown you uh, some, some practical things related to, or maybe some working models related to the electromagnetism, the electromagnetic induction, all those things in physics, all those topics or the areas in physics. I, I I would uh, like to recollect something, something like the curiosity of a small child who sees the magnet for the first time. I, I think that is very high. I still remember being myself from uh, as a kid, as a small kid who was first, um, who first understood what's a magnet or what's the concept. I used to do a lot of, I used to play a lot with them. I think most of you have experienced that in your li life. So we are people who are uh, not able to understand or who will never know what's the importance of the concept of electricity and magnetism in our daily life. We will not be able to spend a single day without this in our real life or maybe without uh, this in uh, doing our day-to-day -day activities. That much important this concept of electricity and magnetism is. We will not be able to sing, uh, think about a single day without this in our daily life. Maybe electricity, you will say, the concept of uh, combination of electricity and magnetism, the electromagnetism is also important. So we'll start with the basic part itself. So we'll start with the definition of electricity and the magnetism phenomena. So what is electricity? I'm not able to see uh, any, any one of you typing anything in the chat box. So I'm, I want the session to be interactive. And uh, if you are there, you can just type a single hi or something in the chat box. Yes. So we'll move with the definition. So what is electricity? It can be called as a form of energy, right? Electricity can be called as a form of energy, which, which has the flow of electrons. So what is magnetism? It's also a phenomena which is related with magnetic field. So both of these are interrelated, right? So we'll discuss about those things in uh, really detail. So this uh, magnetism is a phenomena which is associated with the magnetic fields which arise from the motion of the electric charges. Yes. The basic idea that we all and this, uh, all have an idea, right? The, ba the basic parts, the basic applications which we see in our household, which we see in everything that we look into. About the motors, about the microwave ovens, about the cards. You have studied each one of these applications in really detail. Maybe I think with block diagram, the motor and the generator concept with block diagram, the working. I think mostly in 10, we have started studying it. So what is a motor? It's a device which converts the electrical energy into something called the mechanical part of the physical movement. So they generate the magnetic fields with the help of electric current and they cause the magnetic force um, with a particular magnet which causes the movement of the or maybe which causes the motor to run or which causes the motor to spin. That's what the basic working is. Now, when it comes to microwave oven, a very important thing in our home, right? A very basic or important thing in our home. So it contains a device. I hope you know the basic working. It contains a device called the magnetron. It's, it's, it's something called a vacuum tube type of structure which generates the power. So they'll have the electric charges. So this is covered by a magnet. Uh, it's around the tube or the vacuum tube. So whenever we provide a magnetic force, it causes the electrons to move in the loop. For that loop only, the vacuum tube type of structure is made in the ovens. Now the next one is cards, which is there in the picture. So this also we have studied about the magnetic strips, which are there in the card. So these are some areas where the concept of electricity and magnetism is there and which we are using in our day-to-day -day life. I know this is very, you all are very familiar with these things. We'll be discussing about some areas which you have never thought of. Are these applications of electricity and magnetism, is, is this concept there? Yes, we'll quickly move forward. So now we'll discuss the concept of electromagnetism. So I'm, I'm just asking the students to type the definition of electromagnetism in the chat box. So I wish the session was interactive. You have studied about electromagnetism, right? About the electric current and or the, about the electric field and the magnetic field. So is there anyone who knows the definition of electromagnetism or what's the concept is? It's a branch of physics or the physical science. 
which deals with the electric current or the electric field as well as the magnetic field and their interactions right on any particular substance or any particular matter that's what the basic idea of electromagnetism we can consider these concepts of electric or the magnetic as a single phenomena or maybe as a combination of both of them and we know a magnetic field is created by the moving of the electric current or i would say uh, it's 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 possible by the or it is uh, by the movement of the charges so can anybody uh, mention an example of this concept of electromagnetism a natural example which was there before the coming up of technology can anybody mention an example the basic example that uh, is in the natural form that we have experienced yes i am looking into the chat box again any any anybody mention the strong concept that, that is something which is natural that we have experienced we have very strongly experienced it's in the form of light thing that is something called the electromagnetic radiation in the form of light i hope uh, this was the first example which your teacher told you when she was teaching the concept of electromagnetism so the concept of electricity and magnetism the combination called the electromagnetism has made great revolutions in the in different industries i would say especially in the field of engineering i would say medical field or industrial field or even space or different sectors were the consumers of the concept of electromagnetism and i think we'll we'll just look into a little bit of theory that you have studied we have started the definitions with uh, yes somebody have typed about the electromagnetic radiations in the chat box yes so we have started the definition with something called uh, if a current carrying conductor it's 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 wounded on a high permeability core uh, especially we used to mention it as iron core then we call it as an electromagnet so if this el electromagnet is excited with a particular source what are source you are giving it produces the magnetic field that's what the basic idea is if it's induced or if it's excited with some source of supply it produces the uh, magnetic field that's what the basic idea is and i would say what the the strength of the magnetic flux that is produced depends upon the current that is flowing in this magnet or maybe depends upon the number of the wounds or the number of turns that you that is there in it so this is the basic idea or this i think these statements are there in the your textbook itself in your 10th textbook itself so now i think we'll move on yes something which we can't live off in everything that is described in the diagram the concept of electromagnetism is there you can just go through the different parts in the diagram i'll i'll just give you some time to look into all the things that's there in the diagram we have a home here we have an office there maybe a tower here the radar unit is there then vehicles are there some microwave oven mo mobile phones are there so starting from the home from the solar panel to the wiring the electrical appliances the washing machines the kitchen equipments the mobile phones uh, the the traveling the microwaves the tower the power lines the power grids the storage units the radar the radar units the entertainment unit the office systems so everywhere we are depending or we use this concept but when are we are using mobile phones will we think of this something called electricity and magnetism no right the concept of electricity and magnetism and the electromagnetism is the base of lot of inventions that have happened or lot of discoveries it's the base of lot of discoveries that has happened till now yes this is also very common to all of you i hope so these are some of the pictures i have taken from your textbooks itself about the speakers about the security systems the bells the cards which we have already discussed these are also using the concepts that we have described maybe we'll just look into some of them in detail so the security systems especially we call this as the locking systems for the different doors maybe in hotels and all you know about it right about the magnetic locking systems so unlock uh, we can unlock these um, rooms or these doors by using the cards we can swipe these cards or you have a specific code so this magnetic card reader reads it when you are swiping it it reads it and if the number which is there on the card matches with what is stored then only the door will open so the basic idea the basic the very basic idea 
the second one is in the entertainment systems uh, the television speakers or the seats uh, the different stereo systems so here all we use this concept this is something which is uh, there in your textbook itself the loudspeakers all of them use the concept I would uh, give you an idea of when the current which is passing through this electromagnet is varied. I would say um, the, the membrane of the speaker, it will move uh, front and back. It's like move back and forth. So that movement will cause a change. So if the current is varied, there will be some uh, frequencies of the sound which result in a vibration of the speaker. And that's the working of or it will create something called as the sound waves. Then we have alarming system or all these bells where the sounds are produced by this electromagnetic coils. It's like we'll strike the bell and this, we have this electromagnetic coils. So when the when we are striking, it gets attracted to it. These coil gets energized and it gets attracted to this and the bell rings. So this is the basic idea or which you have already studied. Now we'll cover up something which is very important, which is in industries. I would say you'll not be able to see any area without the concept of generator and motor. I would, I would, it's like in our homes and all the devices we are using, but the basic thing in all the industries, all the, I would say, whether it's electrical, whether it's automobile, whatever industry it is, you will not see anything without these two things, which is motor as well as the generator. It's, it's, it plays a dominant part in almost all the industries, maybe I would say primary source or uh, a power source. It can be called as a power source or a driving source for different systems that's existing. This also you have studied, I know, but we'll, we'll just quickly discuss these. So what is generator? It converts the mechanical energy into the electrical energy. And what is something called the motor? Motor which converts the electrical energy into the mechanical energy. Um, I, I hope you know the concept of the, uh, the stator, the rotors and all, and the detailed working also. Now, how many of you heard about sensors and actuators, the actuating devices? They also work based on electromagnetism. Then I would say different sensors are the Hall effect sensors is the um, different magneto sensors are the different types of magnetic sensors are there, which which work on the basis of the concept of electromagnetism. Now we have something which is different. From this, the session starts, or from this, the basic part starts. Till now we have discussed everything that you have covered in your school, maybe about the examples that you have uh, you are already having an understanding about. How many of you have heard about maglev or magnetic levitation? Can you please type in the chat box if you have heard? Maybe you can just type a yes. If you have heard about the magnetic levitation or the concept of maglev, you can just type a yes. It's a very famous concept. It's being used by different countries for different purposes. So how many of you know or how many of you heard about it? I'm, I'm waiting for your reply in the chat box. Yes, somebody has replied magnetic trains. Absolutely. It's the maglev trains. So they work based on the concept of electricity and magnetism, something called the electromagnetism. How many of you think trains are working based on the concept of electromagnetism? When we were studying, we never thought of this is this much important. So maglev or the concept, it's, it's basically called the magnetic levitation. What is uh, the magnetic levitation? It is a method by which an object is suspended without any support other than the magnetic field. You can see a figure here, right? I have a small, uh, maybe a square type or a block of thing. So it's, 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 it's not touching anything, right? You know, there is no support for this object. It's just suspended. It's because of the magnetic field. With the support of magnetic field only, it's suspended. There is no other support for it. So the method by which an object is suspended with no other support, with, with no support other than the magnetic field, which is called as maglev or magnetic levitation. This is a very important concept. This is being used in different sectors. It's being used in maglev trains. I, I hope at least some of you have heard about the maglev trains. It's being used in contactless melting. It's being used in magnetic bearings, product display systems and all. Of this, the most famous one is something called maglev trains. The maglev trains is really important or it's a very important innovation that has come up in the transportation sector. The concept of electromagnetism has changed the transportation sector with something called the maglev trains. 
how many of you know the basic concept or how many of you feel like you have heard about maglev trains how many of you have heard about maglev trains we call this as the floating vehicle imagine you have a train or maybe it will expand to some other vehicles also some other transportation uh, sector also some other vehicles in the transportation sector also imagine you have a train which is just floating like it's in air so the whole train journey is supported by magnet or it's wo it works with the help of magnets that's what the maglev train us and the concept is basically called as magnetic levitation levitation is the concept in which we have something which is floating with the support of magnetic field only there is nothing else to support the floating object or it may be train or anything so this was a concept which was there maybe uh, before centuries but it got uh, implemented maybe in the 20s um 2016 or uh, 2014 time it got commercialized during that time so today the first application or the first uh, topic which we are going to study is something called the maglev train which is a very important topic so i have a single definition for the maglev train it can be defined as a system that enables a train to repel and push up off the track while at the same time enables the train to move in such elevated condition taking advantage of the lack of friction maglev is defined as a system which enables a train there is something called repelling and pushing up of the track because we know the train there is a track and the train is moving above the track there is no contact between the train and the track in the case of maglev train we will not say the term as track we will call it as guideway there is something called a guideway which is called the track and the train is repelling and it's 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 just moving above the track it's just pushes off the track at the same time there is some force which enables the train to move forward it's like it's it's elevating and uh, we we would discuss the concept of the working in really detail the working principle of the maglev trains in really detail i i think most of you have seen some videos of these trains in the youtube or maybe uh, when you're scrolling up different things it's a very interesting area and a lot of researches are happening and a lot of new new innovations or inventions are coming up in the field so what is the concept of magnetic levitation here according to magnetic levitation i have a vehicle or we call it as a train because it's similar to the structure of a train it's it's something huge so it's similar to the structure of train that's why it's called maglev train so here i have a vehicle which is suspended and which is propelled above a guidance track or maybe on a guidance track with the help of magnet and i would say this is mainly working or the vehicle is uh, on the top of the track with the uh, support of something called the linear induction motor can anybody who is listening to the session name the country who are having this uh, who have implemented the maglev trains you can just type it in the chat box can anybody name some countries who have already implemented this maglev trains do we have maglev trains do we have as indians we do we have maglev trains implemented in any cities in the country i'm waiting in the chat box i'm i'm waiting to get your reply in the chat box do we as indians do we have uh, some something called maglev trains implemented in our country i would say the answer is no different countries in the world are having it i would say japan is having it germany is having it china is having it even korea is having it but uh, in india the yes uh, i think maurya have uh, yes typed in the uh, chat box as japan yes japan is having it so the peculiarity of these vehicles is that they don't have to steel wheels we know trains are having wheels right there is a steel rail so these uh, trains are not having that steel wheels or the steel rails it's like um um this is the basic idea basic idea or the basic concept of something called a maglev train we'll we'll start discussing the concept of the working model in really detail so the train is moving because of the changes that's happening in the magnetic field i would say the track is also made of magnets the two sides of the track is also made of magnet and the train's lower side is also having magnets so due to these attractive or the repulsive force that is there the train is propelled with the help of change in the magnetic field so once the train starts i would say most of the trains are having wheels but it's for the initial purpose only 
once the train reaches the basic speed then there is no need for this wheel it will start floating but this concept will work only when the train has a minimum basic speed so they are having some wheels for some purpose it's like just to start the process so when the train uh, starts to process these uh, starts moving this magnetic fields will switch as the result it's like now we know the concept of uh, attraction and repulsion right i have a video to show you the concept also so based on this concept of attraction and repulsion it's it's just moving forward or it's just pulling itself forward that's what the concept is or it just uh, travel under the two different principles i would say the basic idea is same for different countries i would say for japan and germany the basic working principle behind maglev train is same but the important part is that the protocols are different there are two main principles behind the working of maglev train the first one is electromagnetic suspension and the second one is called as electrodynamic suspension and uh, the train will be floating maybe about 0.39 inches some countries they have experimented up to 10 centimeters above the guideway or the track so you could see the gap correctly between the train and the track that is made so this much gap it's it's made as a part of uh, the working now i think uh, the the most important people the most important countries who are researching in this field are germany japan and china now germans use the concept of electromagnetic suspension which is called as emf and the japan people they mostly focus on the concept of electrodynamic suspension so this is the basic concept so in the case of electromagnetic suspension i have the bottom of the train which is wrapped with a steel guideway i think i would uh, just show you the video yes just have a look at this video um is this some I hope the sound is also okay for all of you. If not, please type in the chat box. What is even more important, electromagnet is the object which creates magnetic field when electric current flows through it. It is usually simple conductors, wire, cable, or even better, the combination of iron core and a wire wrapped around. The direction of current determines the electromagnet's polarity, and in addition, if you change the direction of current, both the electromagnet and the switch. Put it somewhere as you know. Our second term is the state of activity. So, the activity is a property of complete disappearance of electric resistance in various solids as they are pulled below a characteristic temperature. This temperature varies from different materials, but in general is below 20 Kelvin. As superconducting magnets are super strong and super efficient, they are generally used to generate powerful magnetic fields which have the ability to levitate and propel trains. Now, maglevs. There are two main types of magnetic trains those based on electromagnetic suspension, also known as EMS, and those based on electrodynamic suspension, also known as EDS. Both types have similar propulsion principles based on the wind motor, but the main difference is in the way how levitation is achieved. Electromagnetic suspension uses the effective force between them. Magnets present on the underside of the train and the magnets present sideway to levitate the train. This electric force is depending on 1.3 centimeters above the driveway, bearing in mind it is strong enough to overcome the rotational force. The stabilization of the train is achieved with the help of side driving magnets. The propulsion is secured by constantly changing the polarity of magnets on the track, which, speaking in terms of human motors, acts as stator. You could just see the uh, guideway, which is also having magnets, and the train side is also having magnets, right? So, when it comes to the south pole and north pole, um, one action will take place, and when it comes to north pole and north pole, another action will take place. This is how the train is floating to the direction, whichever direction it wants to move, it will float using this. Electromagnets on board which is brought up fixed forward 
while the speed is controlled by changing the frequency of altering the current. Keep in mind that the magnetic attraction varies largely with the spread of distance. Minor changes in distance between the magnets and the wind can produce greatly varying forces. Is changes in force of the wind to the sophisticated system which maintains a constant gap this method is simply implemented in GPS and it also has the capability to maintain levitation at zero speed, which is not the case with EDS. Electrodynamic suspension on the other side, in order to levitate the train, uses the repulsive force created between the sets of magnets of same polarity, which are located on the train and on the guideway. This repulsive force is high enough to overcome gravitational force and allows a train to levitate 10 centimeters above the guideway. When a train moves along the track, the supercooled, superconducting magnets on either side of the train would induce electric current in the levitation coils and create a magnetic field. Levitation coils are located on the guideway and they have the shape of figure 8. When those coils experience the changing magnetic field made by the moving superconductors, two currents are induced that oppose the change in the magnetic field. One below that creates a reactive magnetic field that opposes the superconducting magnet's pole, and one above that creates a pole that attracts it. Those two combined are responsible for levitation of the vehicle 10 centimeters above the ground. Propulsion on the other side is achieved by a linear synchronous motor whose stator is additional coils in the guideway, while the rotor is superconductor which is already located on the train. The train is propelled in a similar way like in case of EMS by constant changes in the polarity of the tracks and magnets. The benefits of this method are incredible stability at high speeds and the ability to maintain correct distance between the train and the guideway. The bad side is the fact that sufficient speed must be achieved in order to levitate the train at all. For this reason, the train must be equipped with wheels or some other form of landing gear in order to support the train until it reaches takeoff speed. So I hope you have received an idea about the working of uh, the concept of uh, magnetic levitation. If you wish to get the link of these videos or if you wish to know more details maybe towards the end of the session we can discuss and i would say the difference between the electrodynamic system and the electromagnetic system is that um, they have a super cooling it's it's actually we are using superconductors so it's need to be cooled so the cooling is the difference in both of these mechanisms and i would say the eds system the dynamic systems um, it's like it, it is consuming very less power compared to that of the electromagnetic system. But there is something called the cooling mechanism, so which makes the process costly compared to the other one. Uh, I hope everybody has received an idea about the concept or the working of magnetic levitation. I would say why this was developed by different scientists. What was the need of magnetic levitation? We know as our commercial trains or as our conventional trains, which we are using in our country, they, are, they, they can cause very good uh, it's like they can cause pollution they are not quiet the sound is there it's not environment friendly and they consume very higher amount of energy and maybe uh, the the tear the tearing the lows the repairs and everything is really high so here there is no physical contact or there is no concept of wheel and even this is very high speed i would say the highest was about 373 miles per hour or about 603 kilometers per hour to so see how fast they are moving and these trains there is no contact so there is no issue it's environment friendly uh, there is no tr and all so there are a lot of advantages and that's why different researchers are still working in this area but the most important drawback is the initial investment because we need to have separate tracks laid down for these systems it's like the track needs to have these magnets, the different types of magnets, superconducting magnets that, that need to be installed. And the initial start, we need to provide them some power. We need to have that wheels also for the initial purpose. So the initial cost is about 60 times compared to the trains that we are using. So it's very uh, difficult for different countries to set up these trains, even the speed, even uh, the it's environment friendly. This is the factor which is creating a hindrance in a lot of nations and implementing it. Now, I think 
the top three countries who are experiment on uh, experimenting on them or the top three countries which have commercial lines which is being used by the citizens of the country are china south korea and japan i would say china is having three maglev range i would uh, in in shanghai it's there in beijing it's there in changsha it's there there are three lines which is connecting different airports and different cities of china it was commercialized from the year 2004 in china and the topmost one or the one with the highest speed is L0 series Magla, the record speed is 602 km per hour or 373 miles per hour. You could see the different countries. So in this, a lot more inventions are a part of China and um, Korea. Then Germany is also there. Uh, Japan is also there. Even UAE has started different projects related to the magnetic levitation. I, I hope you are able to hear all these things along with me. You are in the session along with me. I could see some queries in the chat box. I'll be addressing those queries towards the end of the session. Now, this is a very interesting video. Trains have evolved over time. They've moved from steam to diesel to electric power. Today, trains are becoming more futuristic than ever, with maglev trains blazing a path toward the future of transport. So what exactly is a maglev train? Maglev trains are powered by sets of magnets. Magnetized coils running along the track or guideway repels large magnets on the train's undercarriage. They create a magnetic field that causes the train to hover above the guideway and keeps it stable. Power is then supplied to coils in the walls to create a system of magnetic fields that move the train along the guideway. The electric current is constantly alternating to change the polarity of the magnetized coils. This change in polarity causes the magnetic field in front of the train to pull the vehicle forward, while the magnetic field behind the train adds more forward thrust. To make this possible, maglev trains are equipped with superconducting magnets. When cooled to extreme temperatures, they're able to generate magnetic fields strong enough to suspend and propel a train car forward at very high speeds. The main advantage maglev trains have over their traditional counterparts is in their theoretical speed limit. Suspending a train above its tracks eliminates one bottleneck for its speed, friction. With this limitation removed, maglev trains are able to reach much faster peak speeds. To illustrate just how fast maglev trains can be, let's look at Japan's bullet trains. While they've long held a reputation for high speeds, their maglev variants are even faster. In a special test, the speed record of 275 miles per hour for the 300X was absolutely crushed by the L0 series peak speed of 375 miles per hour. Now let's move on to China, where the prototype of a new maglev train that could reach top speeds of 385 miles per hour was unveiled in January 2021. And yet that's not even scratching the surface of how fast we can get maglev trains to go. Even with friction out of the way, maglev trains still have one major limiting factor to their speed, drag or wind resistance. So what if we took air out of the equation altogether? This is where the vet train comes in. These are maglev trains situated inside evacuated tubes or sealed tunnels with nearly all air sucked out of them. Drag would be eliminated almost entirely in these conditions, allowing for higher maximum speeds at lower energy expenditure. Theoretically, their maximum speeds would be somewhere in the range of 2,500 miles per hour. That's about five times faster than the average cruising speed for a commercial airliner. As eye-popping as those figures are, VAC trains likely won't sustain those speeds for the entire duration of the trip. Rapidly accelerating or decelerating to this speed would be stressful on the human body. Instead, they would spend half the trip accelerating more slowly to a maximum speed, then spend the second half of the trip slowly decelerating. Back trains are gradually coming into reality. In 2013, Elon Musk proposed the Hyperloop, a train system with a similar operational principle to the VAC train. Although it's not going to offer commercial passengers the ability to break the sound barrier, it would be fast. The Hyperloop is estimated to be able to reach 760 miles per hour. 
Testing is currently underway on another VACTrain project, the Virgin Hyperloop, which last year successfully carried two passengers along a test track spanning 1,640 feet. Virgin hopes to commercialize the concept and bring it to market by 2030. Now let's go deeper. What if these high-speed trains could run between continents? It may seem like a pipe dream, but some of the futuristic design requirements for this already exist, such as the underwater tunnel systems VAC trains will inevitably need to pass through. Let's take a look at the Channel Tunnel, connecting the United Kingdom with France. Most of its length of 31 miles is underwater. The Channel Tunnel took about six years to build and cost almost $6 billion. Scaling this up would take a lot more time and resources. In 2014, China proposed a train line that would start in northeastern China, traverse Siberia, pass through a tunnel in the Pacific Ocean, cut across Alaska and Canada, and reach the continental United States. The project is estimated to cost over $200 billion, requiring thousands of miles of new railway infrastructure to be built, including a 64-mile section under the Bering Strait. It is speculated that this line could take anywhere from 12 to 15 years to complete, and in the meantime, we'll have to make sure our VAC trains can travel at this scale. But all of this being said, wouldn't futuristic, High-speed train systems be a magnificent sight to behold in our ever-expanding technology-driven world. So I hope the video was also helpful to you. So I would like to discuss some points which was there in the video. How many of you have, a, it's like heard about the concept called the VAC train and the Hyperloop? We discussed about the maglev, uh, that is the magnetic levitation concept, and a lot of countries are operating different trains on them. How many of you know what is VAC train? One factor that is very difficult for this maglev train is, it's like maybe the air, or it, it, it can be a problem for this train which is uh, operating. So what is what it can be done is, we can suck all the air, we can build a separate tunnel for the VAC train so that they'll be able to travel. And I would say two passengers have already successfully completed their travel for different uh, kilometers in, I would say, very high speed. So how the train works is, as we humans, we'll feel very difficulty um, in, in moving in 600 or 700, that uh, range of speed. So how the trains operate is, they will start with a very low speed. They'll, uh, towards the middle of the journey, they'll have the maximum speed. Then they'll slow down and we'll end the journey in the lowest speed. So this is the way these trains will work out. And maybe you have heard about the concept of Hyperloop also. It's like a lot of experiments are being con conducted across different parts of the world. And I would say Elon Musk is somebody who does a lot of research in that. We all know about the different tunnels which are connecting different countries and continents. If those tunnels can be used for transportation, it's like there is nothing called air and all in those tunnels. So it's like if if it can be used for transportation, it can be another something or uh, biggest innovation that has happened in the um, technological part. So that also can be used for maybe goods transportation and a lot of researches are coming up. So after this magnetic levitation or this much speed uh, can be achieved through something called VAC train as well as the Hyperloop. And I hope you have heard about these two concepts also. Now I think we'll move on to the next important field, which is called the uh, medical field or the medical sciences. So the electromagnets plays a very important role in medicine. Can anybody give me some examples of electromagnetism or the concept of electromagnets being used in medical field? So I'm waiting for your reply in the chat box. So can anybody name some of the applicants, uh, applications of electromagnets in the medical field? Maybe it can be in medical equipments also. Can anybody name some of them? So these electromagnets are applied to the medical as well as the scientific equipments, different equipments, because they are really powerful, they have lower resistance and they have higher efficiency. They can be used in, I would say, cancer treatments. They play a very good role in uh, the implants. Yes, to send signals inside the organs. Yes, a lot of researches are happening in that. And this is how magnets can help you to save life. So I have listed out different examples. 
the concept of electromagnets you can see them in magnetic therapy you can see them in all the x-ray equipments all the scanners all the dialysis machines all the dispensers or the disinfectants so in all these parts you can see the magnets being used or the concept of electromagnetism being used how many of you have heard about mri that the magnetic resonance imaging that's the mri technique which is being used in hospitals the mri scans so there are different types also there are nuclear magnetic resonance spectrometers maybe mass spectrometers particle accelerator different parts are there we'll discuss the details of mri in really detail what is mri mri can be called as a diagnostic tool which works with high potential mri can be called as a diagnostic tool which works with really high potential we would place a powerful electromagnet in the patient's head you can see the working the structure here we would place a powerful electromagnet in the patient's head this electromagnet passes the current through the scalp to the underlying neurons so you will get a detailed picture of what are the organs in the body it helps to diagnose the number of diseases different diseases which is there for the different patients i would say some which include brain tumors hemorrhage nerve injury stroke injury it can also used to detect the hearts or the uh, dung, uh, the lungs damage so you can just see a diagram here of the magnetic resonance imaging system which is being used so if the device generates some static magnet or the static magnetic fields of the range there is a range called 300 to 500 goes it's like a particular point is activated where this magnet can be used or it can be used to provide relief to the, the pain in different parts of the body so after taking a, a particular uh, scan doctors will be able to identify different diseases another important advantage or field is something called magnetic field therapy after the mri it's being used in magnetic field therapy this uses different kinds of magnet to boost your overall health maybe uh, something like different magnets used in different parts of your body uh, to improve your health to improve your pain it is also called as electromagnetic therapy or magnetic healing the practice of using electromagnetic field to treat different illness it's like you are not taking a medicine it's a non drug option you can relieve your pain using this method so there are different types of methods also the a uh, tms method is there the electrical nerve stimulators is there or the pemf is there so all these can help you to avoid different pains in your body you can just see a diagram where you can see the leg of a patient and different the these radiations in a very lower range are passed into their body so it can help them to relieve the pain in their body so see the different sectors the electromagnetic theory is used to treat and manage the symptoms something like depression or anxiety it can help lot of patients those who have the parkinson's disease it can help you to reduce the pain especially those who are struggling with arthritis it can help to improve muscle mobility as well as flexibility then another sector which uh, comes with lot of uh, advantages or lot of applications is something called wound healing electrical stimulation then bone healing brain stimulation tissue engineering even for different diagnostic purposes now i think before moving into the next example i would say um, how many of you have heard about robots there are different robots which are being used by uh, the medical people i would say you know about uh, different industrial robots but it's being used by the medical sector also these robots are used by different surgeons i would i would give you some example maybe in our eyes or some uh, some parts of our body maybe if some metal piece has stuck these robots can be used to extract that steel or the metal piece from patient's eye or different parts of the body maybe um, another example is like uh, the micro robots it's like a lot of micro surgery researchers are working on the electromagnets with the help of the micro robots this can also be used in the same way to to perform surgeries in patient's bodies now another example i would say is uh, um, uh, something called a uh, lot of kids without think they have swallowed something maybe like safety pin or something so in order to remove that also we can make use of this so that's the applications in the medical field now moving on to the final application we have the communication sector so it's like we all know what is the process of communication right 
it's just the process of sending and transmitting information. It's like we have a sender and a receiver. We are sending and transmitting information. So the transmission of energy over these long distances is carried out through this electromagnetic waves at higher frequencies. So you can see the diagram. We have different waves here. How many of you feel like um, the, the concept of electricity and magnetism when we're using mobile phones? We have the sound energy, which is converted into electromagnetic energy. So we have the radio transmitters and this electromagnetic energy is transferred into the uh, is transmitted to the receiver. So once the receiver receives it, it is again transformed back to the sound part. That's or the sound energy form. So this is the basic working that's happening. So from the cell phone communication to the radar technology, from the near field communication to the satellite communication, electro, the concept of electromagnetism, the concept of electricity and magnetism plays a very important role. So that, that is something related to the communication sector. So I think I have come towards the end of the session. I hope you like the session and you are able to receive insights related to different uh, concepts about the maglev, about the medical field, about the communication sector also. I could see some queries that are coming up in the chat box. So those students who wish to contact related to the admission, you can just contact the, this mail ID or this number. You can directly call me. If there are any queries, you can type it in the chat box, students. I'll be able to address the queries. So if you have any queries, you can just type it in the chat box. Researchers are still going on. Just one project has started. So, yes, I think you can just note down this mail ID. It's my mail ID and my number. So if, if there is anything related to admission or if you have a small doubt related to anything that we have discussed today, you can directly contact me. So thank you students for attending. I, I hope I'll be able to see you all in tomorrow's session. So tomorrow we'll be discussing about a mathematics topic, which is probability. So thank you so much for attending and all the best students. Thank you.